Our next speaker doesn't really need an introduction because I think his name is up there somewhere. Uh, but I've, I've known uh, Mary Mahoney for about 15 years now. I was actually served on the board of the Chamber of Commerce in the late 80s with him, uh, back when he was working for HP. And uh, he's always provided, as he does today, just a really great balance to any group that he's in. Um, always willing to point out things that are going right, supportive of things that are going wrong, and always willing to grab a glove and get, into the, and get in the game and help. So without any further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our Mayor, Mayor Orrin Mahoney. Thank you. Well, thanks, Kevin. And uh, first of all, uh, thanks to all of you that showed up today for this event. It's always a, a great event and another example of, uh, as we said earlier, of the partnership between a chamber of city and, uh, and a Rotary Club of Cupertino that, to put this on every year. Uh, before I start my presentation, I have one more VIP that I'd like to introduce, and that's my wife, Carolyn, sitting out here in the front. <laughs> So I'd like to thank her for putting up with all the time that I spend on both Rotary and the city and all my other activities and, and more importantly for putting up with me. So thank you. So you know the theme today is, is for the love of Cupertino and, and uh, you know love is a word that we don't often throw around in municipal government and you know in, in our business community. Uh, the reason I'm, I based it here was a little similar to, to what I did the last time. Uh, last time, I, my State of the City was based on a book called Who's Your City by Richard Florida. Uh, he had done a, a, a talk at a League of California Cities event. And uh, it was really kind of, there were a lot of interesting things in. And, and, and his work on Who's Your City uh, talked about what makes a great city, what makes a city that attracts uh, people that are, you know, highly educated, uh, mostly in high tech types of things, and, and uh, like the people that are here in the Valley, and certainly the people in Cupertino, and I kind of matched up Cupertino against that. Well, I had the, uh, uh, the privilege of going down to uh, another uh, League of California Cities seminar this year, and uh, Peter Kagiyama had another t talk, and he has another book called For the Love of Cities, and it's a little different view. Unlike uh, Richard Florida's book that focused on, on kind of the high-end cities, if you will. Um, Kageyama's book really had a broad focus on all types of cities, you know, from, uh, from high tech to the Rust Belt. And, and the message was any city could have elements of it that make it lovable, that make it where, where people don't just put up with the city, but people really love their city. And in particular, the focus was on, on really grassroots activities. So, and, and I'll be talking a lot more about that today. Um, these are people from the community that put things together, make things happen, that make the city more lovable. So one example of, of how different his book is from, from Richard Florida's book, this is one example that Kagiyama uses of, of people that love their city so much that they actually marry their city. And, and uh, these are from Cleveland. Those are icons of the Cleveland environment that these two people wear. Now, I don't know about you, but I haven't seen anybody walking around the city of Cupertino with the Morion tattooed on their arm. But, uh, so we're a little, a little different from that point of view, but it gives you some idea of how passionate some people feel about their city. So do we actually love our city? You know, that's, again, that's a strong word. Let's, uh, let's take a look at a couple of, a couple of things and, and see what we, what we are. So the city of Cupertino, you may or may not know, every two years does a survey. It's called the Godby Survey. That's the company that does it. And we survey all our residents. Um, and ask them various questions about how, how we're doing as a city. Um, sometimes we focus in on, on various aspects of it. And we just did this, we just got the results. In fact, the results are gonna be, we've seen them individually, but they'll be presented to the council at, at, one, at one of our next council meetings. And the executive summary said that an overwhelming majority of the residents are, 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 are basically satisfied with their quality of life, 94%. And these are outstanding numbers that, you know, that most cities cannot, yes. What's more interesting, or as interesting, especially as it relates to the theme here, that 73% feel a strong sense of community in the city. 
and that's really important uh, as, as we move forward, as we move forward as a city and, and uh, meet new challenges and do new things. And that's a, 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 an 18% increase over two years ago in, in that category. So again, people are not only happy with kind of the basic level of services that we have here in, in the basic life, but they really feel connected into Cupertino. So, you know, let's, that's, that's nice and adds data and, and uh, data's good, I like data, but let's hear from some of our residents about this. This is a beautiful city. Yeah, I don't, to me, it hasn't lost its charm of quaintness. And for fact, we're getting a new Main Street, Cupertino, which is close to my house and I'm really excited about. But it's a, it's a green city. They, they provide so much information. We get a, a, a Wednesday paper called the Cupertino Courier about all the different ways to recycle, and I love it. Because they have a really good community college here, so education is good. Yeah, that's why I like Cupertino. Cupertino has a lot going on. The flea markets every month on the first weekend of the month, and then I come here every week for hoop class with my sister. So we enjoy the community center. There's a lot going on here. I love Cupertino for its imagination, innovation, and inspiration. The, everybody knows the weather's nice, the schools are good, the community is small enough for a lot of things to go to happen, but big enough so that uh, we feel like we're part of a big environment. So we enjoy all of the uh, social and the cultural things that you have available uh, in the area. And I love Cupertino for the people, really, just the people. Uh, I love how diverse Cupertino is uh, with the different people and the different foods and just everything is so, so diverse. So I had four children, all went through the Cupertino schools, so that was probably number one. Um, and then I loved my neighborhood. Um, what else? I love Memorial Park. And now that I'm a retired teacher, I love working at the Senior Center. And I really love Cupertino because it's so peaceful all the time. <laughs> One of the things that I like about Cupertino is that there's a lot of dining choices, um, whether it be Jamba Juice or the new Hawaiian burger or uh, Asian food, we have a lot of choices for food. I love how everyone in Cupertino has a drive to succeed and we have the opportunities here to do whatever it is we want to do. I just like it. It's just a community that uh, has a lot to offer. So my talk's over, that's what else can I say? <laughs> and actually, I, I, uh, a lot of the things that were in my presentation before I saw that are actually tied perfectly. So uh, again, great job by the City Channel in putting that together. So, you know, what do we love about Cupertino? It, it does start with the schools. Um, you heard that there. Obviously, most people that move to Cupertino today move here for the schools, you know, and why not? Um, our, both our elementary school system, our high school system, uh, and, and, uh, and the Deanza College, all are, are first rate. And, uh, you know, they're the highest rated in the state. Um, people come here for them. It, it's amazing, you know, when you have the opportunity, Richard showed some of the rotary activities when you go into schools and I do Dr. Seuss reading day or do some career days or something and uh, uh, the kids are amazing. They're our future and uh, again, thank you to the, to the people here from the school district and, and all the work that everybody does and all the volunteers that support the schools. Again, it's, it's not about the government, it's not about the school board, it's not even about the staff, it's really, you know, all the involvement of, it, especially in the schools, of all the parents uh, that, make, that make a big difference. We love our library. Um, you know, again, we, I think most people have seen, you know, all the statistics, you know, we're the, we continue to be the busiest library. Um, we had the opportunity um, uh, last year, you know, and uh, Gilbert's on the, uh, uh, Council Member, uh, Vice Mayor Wong is on the, the Joint Powers Library Board uh, for the county. Uh, we leverage county resources again, like we leverage a lot of things, and uh, we've extended the hours. I think we have the most hours of any library in the system now. Uh, more important, though, is that kind of the bottom bullet there. There's more than 800 programs 
uh, that the library puts on. So the library is, is much more than a repository for books. There's always a question, you know, hey, in this modern electronic age, you know, what's the role of the library? And the library goes way beyond being a repository for books. Uh, it really is a, a second uh, community center for us and, you know, both a teen center, uh, you know, in, in addition to our, our other teen center and also just a general gathering place uh, for programs. And speaking of gathering places, we do, you know, we have a number of them. Uh, you know, some of this started, uh, it started a long time ago, but I know it was a big initiative of, of former Mayor uh, Lowenthal's, uh, you know, to make uh, Cupertino more walkable, more pedestrian friendly. Uh, we've done that uh, and with a lot of the things that you see on the screen. And uh, when I talk about some of the upcoming projects, um, that's built into all of those projects and uh, it'll, it'll get even better as we, as we move forward. We love the outdoors. Um, we have great parks. Um, you know, our jewel is, is the Stevens Creek Corridor, um, you know, which is right over here. If you, if, and a lot of people don't even, haven't been there. If you haven't been there to Blackberry Farm or walk the Stevens Creek Trail, um, it really is a very, very special place that, that, that none of the other cities around here have anything like it. Um, we have a plan uh, that we're working on. This is the Stevens Creek Restoration Plan. Um, everything, if you look there, there's a kind of a little line kind of toward the left. Everything to the right of that has already been done. It was done and, and showed up in the pictures that I just showed you. Uh, but now we're, we're here to finish that and have the trail go out to uh, Stevens Creek Boulevard. And that's phase two with uh, more, more trail, um, a bridge across the creek, uh, cr again, creek restoration to continue that. Um, you know, and that'll, that'll complete that portion of it. So it is, you know, that, cre that trail is part of something that's called the Stevens Creek Trail. And this is a trail that starts at shoreline and eventually it'll end its way up uh, um, at, at, at the dam or, or even further up as a trail. Um, but there's a, and Mountain View, if you haven't been there on the Mountain View portion of it, it it's really spectacular. They've done a really amazing job of building that and having it come down almost to the Sunnyvale border now. So the question is how to get from Mountain View to Cupertino, and there's a group that's working on that. So there's a, a four cities working group. So it's Mountain View, Los Altos, Sunnyvale, and, and, and us, um, because we don't want Los Altos saying, oh, the trail's gonna end here, and we're saying we're gonna pick it up over there. You know, we've gotta get together and work on this. Uh, there's been a lot of community input. There's a meeting tonight up in Sunnyvale um, with, a, a, with, a, with a big, the first real uh, chance for the community to see some of the proposed possible trail alignments and some of the issues involved. Uh, the meeting tonight's in Sunnyvale. It's focused on Homestead North. And then in February, there'll be a meeting here in Cupertino focused on Homestead South, the same kind of community meeting. So this is great. This is four cities that are not being forced to work together, that just decided to work together for a common good and uh, we're really excited about where this is going to take us. Uh, unfortunately, the geese also love our outdoors. <laughs> uh, you know, there's, no, there's none out there today. Uh, they, they go somewhere else for the winter, thank goodness. But uh, this, is, this, is a tip, this could be a typical shot of right outside these windows in the summertime here. Um, they are a nuisance. They're more than a nuisance. They're, they're probably uh, bordering on a public health uh, issue uh, because uh, geese do what geese are, are want to do. Um, we have a plan in place uh, to deal with that. We've uh, hired, and at one of our next council meetings, we'll be signing a contract to hire some trained dogs that will, with a, with a, with a, few, with a few other programs that we're going to put in place, will hopefully deal with that. And, and, and it, they have good experience elsewhere. And, and uh, um, if, if this is the biggest problem we have, it's okay, <laughs> but even this problem we're, we're going to deal with. You heard earlier about the restaurants, and we do, we do love our food. Again, for a city our size, we have a kind of an amazing array of restaurants. We have, uh, we have a Michelin-starred restaurant in, in Alexander's, and then we you know, go right down to different mom-and-pop types of, of uh, restaurants. Uh, so we, you know, we, we love our food, we love to eat, we support our restaurants. So. You'd think with all that eating that we'd all be fat, but we're not. Um, and this is interesting. You know, there's, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of discussion out there about obesity, especially children's obesity, and, and, and it is an issue. 
Um, and we're actually participated this uh, little logo there, the HEAL logo, the Healthy Eating Active, uh, uh, Active Living campaign is something that we've signed up to do. And that's really about providing opportunities for better food, opportunities for recreation. And, and obviously, you'll see a little bit more. We do that very well. But as, as I've been involved in this, you know, on, on the public service part, I thought, anecdotally, I thought, yeah, not so much in Cupertino, you know. Am I just kind of missing it? And again, you know, being out in, in the schools and out in the community. And when I was down again in San Diego at the conference, there was a booth, the Heal booth, and I said, you know, I don't think we have that much of a problem. And they said, well, look at, the, here, you can find out, here's the report, and I didn't know there was a report. So there is a report, and I'm happy to say out of 245 cities in the state of California, we're the seventh lowest in obesity. Uh, so we have done a good job. There's, there's some reasons for that. Um, one of them is, is that we do, you know, we have a strong youth sports program. And even though, you know, the stereotype of a Cupertino young student is, you know, in front of a book or in front of their, you know, their computer, in fact, they have a lot of opportunities and they take a lot of the opportunities to participate in a wide variety of sports. And whether those are, you know, through the school, through the city program, through all of our youth leagues and whatever. Um, Soccer is a big one. We have a, a real special thing coming up this year. I think you may have seen in a Cupertino Courier, um, I guess it was last, last Friday, that this De Anza Force uh, organization is going to put a soccer tournament here. Uh, there's going to be 150 boys and girls teams. Not 150 boys and girls, 150 teams. Uh, they'll use all 18 of our school and city fields. This is, again, a partnership between all the organizations here supporting this. Um, it's going to be held in July, and uh, depending on how it goes, we'll, they're talking about maybe 200 teams in the future from all around California. So not only is that a good thing to help put Cupertino on a map, but it'll keep our hotels filled and on the weekend and uh, keep our restaurants filled as well. So very, very good program. We do have the opportunity to eat healthy here. Um, we have, you know, of course, our Whole Foods. We have a number of fresh produce markets. So we have the new Monta Vista market that opened last year that specializes in organic foods, and, uh, and that's important. And then we have three farmers markets, actually. So we've got... Uh, the one at Valco on Friday, we've got uh, the one at Deanne's on Saturday, and then the one in, in the Oaks on Sunday. So, and those are all, you know, well populated. And again, uh, provide people the opportunity to, to continue to, to eat healthy and, uh, and enjoy themselves. So, we love our city employees, too. Um, again, the survey, you know, that's one of the nice things about the survey. We can find out, you know, what the residents think about the, the, the job we're doing providing uh, these services. 91% um, again of the residents are satisfied with the job the city is doing to provide services. Um, only 7% are dissatisfied, uh, you know, with the job. Uh, and this is interesting. These are the top, the top, these are the things that get the highest satisfaction rating. So number one, where's John Zarelli, Recology? <laughs> Actually, number, number one and number three, because they're, along with the city, partnering with the city, they drive our recycling program as well. So this always gets high marks, and uh, you may not know that unless you, you know, you compare it city to city. We also have among the lowest um, uh, bills, uh, you know, for that service. So they do a great job. Talked about library services earlier, and I'm gonna talk about the other ones coming up. So these are the things that, uh, that get the highest rating from our residents. What about our city manager? Do we love our city manager? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we all love Dave Knapp, and, and we, we're, really ha we're really happy about David Brown. I'm not sure we're ready for love yet, David, but you know. <laughs> we gotta, you know, it's, you've only been here like a, a two months, three months? Four months, time flies when you're having fun. So, no, it, David's doing a great job. It's one of the most important things that we do as a council is to pick the city manager because everybody, all the city employees work, work for David and, and he's the one that makes things happen. We're just the kind of board. So, uh, so thank you, David, and uh, we're excited to have you here. City financial update, you know, I could go into all kinds of slides and graphs and things like that, but. But we're in good shape. Probably the, the, uh, the biggest thing here, I think, or the biggest testament is, is the second to last bullet. Um, we did refinance our debt this year, and so we went out. You know, when you go refinance debt, they're going to do a credit check. And, and we got the, the absolute highest bond rating from Standard & Poor's uh, that they can give. So that's...
that's, a, you know, that's the outside view of, of us. You know, we can talk all we want about how we think we're doing, but that's, that's somebody uh, giving it the stamp of approval. And that's again, you know, because of, of the work of our city staff, um, it's because we're lucky that, that uh, again, because of our schools, our housing values have kept up, so we didn't have much of a dip in property tax during that period of, over the last few years. Our sales taxes remain strong. Um, our, our transient occupancy tax, which is the hotel tax, uh, continues to, to grow, and uh, we're adding new hotels almost as we speak. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and that's a very important source of revenue as well. So the revenue stream uh, is staying strong and, and we manage our expenses, uh, including all, of, all the things you know, that you read about of unfunded liabilities and pension things and everything that is all under control here in Cupertino. Public safety employees, you, know, you certainly had two examples earlier of, of the type of services we get from our public safety employees. Um, I think everybody here knows, or maybe they don't, that we do not have our own police and fire department. We count on being in the, the county fire district, and we count on contracting uh, with the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Association. So, uh, you know, I'll talk a little bit about, um, especially uh, uh, of the Sheriff's Association. So not only do we get the service that you heard here, which that could be done if we had our own police department, maybe. But earlier this year, I think you remember we had a, a uh, threat to a teacher at Monta Vista High School. Uh, the first time I knew about that was when the police helicopter was hovering over Monta Vista High School. So let me tell you, the city of Cupertino could not own our own police helicopter. <laughs> we probably couldn't pay for the gas for it. So, so because we, we contract, um, not only do we get great service, but we, you know, we leverage a tremendous amount of resources. So if we need a bomb squad, if we need a SWAT team, if we need a helicopter, uh, if we need a search and rescue group, whatever we might need, and hopefully we don't need any of those things, but if we do need them, the, uh, they've been there for us in the past and they're gonna be there for us in the future. So high leverage, great service. Um, Captain Bender's, uh, he's our police chief. That's how we think. We don't think of him as you know, somebody else. He is our police chief and acts that way and acts as a, as a, as a key part of, of the city staff. I talked about our senior center. Um, uh, it's again, you know, you heard one of the residents there talk about uh, volunteering there. We, we get a lot of uh, people that volunteer there. A lot of people are supported there. Um, I think people are aware of some of the services we offer. We've got classes and we've got um, trips. You know, they do trips and classes and, and, you know, all kinds of activities. What a lot of people don't know is um, this, this case management, that we have a case manager there uh, that deals with people, seniors that are having a problem. It might be a financial problem, it might be a medical problem, it might be a, some medical health problem or emotional problem, and uh, they're there to help out, either to take care of it uh, directly if they can or to refer those people to whatever the right organization is, whether it be West Valley Community Services or some county uh, medical thing or whatever. So again, an important part of the community that's you know, above and beyond kind of the things that, that you think about on a daily basis. Diversity, you know, you heard that earlier um, in, in the video again. Um, it, it's one of our strengths. It's absolutely one of our strengths. Um, we celebrate it, you know, the, the chamber puts on a Diwali festival that you see up here. Rotary, of course, puts on the fall festival uh, in partnership with the World Journal. Um, the uh, Sister City Association, Toy Cow Sister City Association puts on a Cherry Blossom Festival. Um, last year, uh, Mayor Santoro uh, took some of this to the next level with the uh, leveraging ethnic diversity workshop that he put on and a lot of good ideas came out of that. Uh, to kind of take us even further in, in uh, uh, seeing how we, can, how we can celebrate that diversity and make it even more, uh, more positive for the city. And I'll, I don't, I'm not sure if we're going to do the same workshop, but I'm definitely going to build on, on the work that Mark did last year. And, and uh, it, was a, it was a great activity. Businesses. We do, you know, new businesses are important. Uh, they're important financially. They generate sales tax. They're important uh, for um, employment. They give people opportunity to, to, to have jobs and work in the city and, that, and uh, that's important. And they're also important, as I said earlier, for places for us to just meet and do things and, and shop and, and get things done. 
Um, these are just a few uh, of, of some of the key new businesses. Uh, starting at the, the lower right, that's the Bay Club, which is a high-end uh, fitness club that moved into a, a part of the Sears building down there, and it's open and, and uh, doing well. And the upper right is the uh, Rite Aid that's over. Um, it's actually moved out and as a separate standalone building out where PW used to be, and I'll talk more about that development, but it's the first... Uh, first implementation of, of uh, the revitalization, revitalization of that shopping center, uh, and it's been open for a number of years, a uh, number of months, sorry. And Islands Restaurant across the street is doing well, and, and uh, for those of you that don't know Islands, is a, it's a chain, a Southern California chain, and, and uh, uh, they selected Cupertino to be their first uh, Bay Area location. And I think that says something about, you know, what they think about, about our economic vitality and, and the people we have here. Um, the lower left is, is, of course, the TJ Maxx and Home Goods and, uh, and Party City that moved in uh, to the, the old Mervyn's complex. And, and that's just revitalized that whole area. There's a boat in bakery that's coming in there kind of to, to flank islands in the front and, uh, and some other restaurants that are going to be coming in. It's just completely changed that shopping center, and you know it's it's not hard to park, but the parking lot is full, and and that's good. A full parking lot is is a good sign of, of economic vitality. And in the upper left is is the Aloft Hotel right on uh, De Anza Boulevard across from St. Joseph's, and it it had a soft opening this week. And I don't know if uh, are you, yeah you are in the back. Depeche uh, from Sashi Corporation, Depeche Gupta uh, was driving that. Uh, project and again it's going to be another welcome addition and I think they're already uh, starting to sell out nights uh, already so that's how strong the demand is for hotel rooms in Cupertino and that's because of all our other businesses as, as you'll guess but we're not going to stop there um, you know one of the projects that was mentioned uh, by one of the neighbors there was the Main Street project uh, this is probably the most in a sense exciting project it's our, our chance to have you know something uh, something similar to a downtown as much of a downtown as we're going to have uh, so the interesting thing was when I was putting this presentation together I looked at my old state of the city presentation just for how long it was and how many slides I could have and guess what there was a main street slide in there so so I almost was going to put really but no it, it's changed you know the last time the last time it got approved and in a slightly different configuration, you know, was, was 2008. And uh, something, there was something going on in the economy in 2008. I forget what it was. But, <laughs> but something about trying to get money and, and get new stores when stores were closing all over the place. So uh, this is real now. Um, it's got a, a hotel. That, that, that Everything's been approved, and we're really looking for it to break ground uh, sometime early this year. And... and uh, um, like I say, it's got a town square, a lot. This, this will be our, our, biggest, our biggest gathering place. But we have some other ones. These are other ones that, are, uh, that have been approved. Um, the, uh, the bottom is, is again, in, in the location where PW was and where Rite Aid moved out. It's, it's an expansion of the store there. So Safeway is going to be coming to Cupertino. Uh, moving from Sunnyvale, actually, the store on Hollenbeck will be, will be basically moved down here. And this will be one of their new uh, big, you know, superstore type uh, locations. So it's going to be a great addition. We did lose a, a, a grocery store here last year, and, and uh, this will more than make up for that. And then the project on the top is um, the Biltmore Adjacency Project, which is down on Stevens Creek. It, it's down where Chili's was. Uh, and... Uh, if, if you, for those of you who were down there, there's Chili's in the front, and then there was a little strip mall in the back, you know, with a lot of, that was pretty, pretty outdated. Um, so this added some housing down there that we, were, um, we need to do to meet our, our uh, regional numbers um, from the uh, Association of Bay Area governments. But more important, it's going to freshen up that whole retail experience. So it's a nice new retail building. There'll probably be a nice restaurant moving in there. And, and other activities going on. And then right around the corner, Seishui Station is where uh, the Bombay oven and the, basically the kind of building behind it that, that once, I guess it was a 7-Eleven or whatever that's been closed for a long time since there was a fire there. That's all being torn down 
and this new complex is being put in and, and integrated in more with Panera from a parking point of view and everything. And this was approved by the Planning Commission and we're gonna be seeing it in the next couple of weeks at, at the council level as well. But again, you know, taking a lot of, if you look around, taking a lot of stuff that you go, know, ooh, that, that doesn't look like, like today's Cupertino and, and, and freshening it up. And then we've got another little project that we're gonna be working on this year. <laughs> So, um, you know, th this, this project is still on course. There's been some, some tuning to it as, as Apple has, has gotten into the details of the project. Uh, um, and we're, you know, we're eager to work with them. Uh, the first thing's gonna happen is an environmental impact report, and it'll go through the planning commission, and it'll go through the council. Um, it, it is, it, it's, it's the biggest project that, that we've ever, uh, had here, uh, we're eager to, to you know work with Apple uh, to make it to make it work uh, for them and for us, and uh, and it's, it's very important as you know, again not just direct economics but all the indirect economics uh, that that are supported by by Apple and all the other key companies that we have here. We are going to do a, a general plan update. For those of you that don't know, the general plan is sort of the high level blueprint of the city. It says how much housing you can have. Uh, how many hotel rooms, how much office space. Um, in order to make the Main Street project happen, uh, they, needed, they needed to use all the existing office space that we had in the city in a general plan. And uh, we, it was, that project was important enough that we said, okay, fine, we'll do that, but, but we need to replenish it. Uh, we're prepared to do a general plan amendment to, to add uh, some office space back. And in fact, since, um, since you're getting the benefit of using up all our office space, we'd, we'd like you to, to fund that general plan amendment. And then the staff took the opportunity saying, well, you know, we, we know there are other developers that want to do some things that, that, that may require some general plan amendments. So rather than deal with it piecemeal, let's integrate it together, uh, do one general plan amendment, and sometime in the next couple of weeks, uh, we're going to have a presentation on that. We'll decide on the scope and scale of that. Uh, we'd also, you know, like, to focus a little, a little, we'd like to focus a lot on the Valco area. Um, I'm not going to say much about that. That's you know been on probably everybody's state of the city for 15 years at least. Um, you know it's it's it, it's underperforming. There's some great assets there, um, and we're we're looking. There are a lot of people looking at some ways to 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 move that ball forward. And again, we're eager and excited to work with with anybody to to make that happen. We do love to partner, uh, in particular, the city partners with the chamber on economic development types of activities. We have an economic development uh, committee meeting that, that meets. Um, Angela Sway, that I think she's out here, I can't see, it's dark from my view out there, uh, is our new economic development manager that joined the city in the last few months, uh, basically uh, replacing the position that, that Kelly Klein had in the past, but with a little different focus, a, f a much more of a focus on small business uh, what we can do as a city, partnering with the chamber uh, to help out small business. Chamber does a lot of things already. Uh, we do a lot of things already, but, but we know that there's more that can be done. Uh, one thing we're kind of looking at and playing with is a, is a mobile app. Uh, not a city mobile app, because we have one of those, and not a chamber mobile app, because we're thinking about doing that, but, but a unified app. Again, we want something where it'd be a single place to go where you could find out what you need to know about the city, what you need, you know, if you want a restaurant, if you want to do something with your business, one single place to get that information. So we're, we're uh, in early stages of investigating that. We love our arts. You know, again, uh, I don't think there are many cities the size of Cupertino that have their own Shakespeare, have a Shakespeare in a park festival, um, have uh, the resources we have at Flint Center and the Performing Arts Center at De Anza and the Euphrat Museum. And something new, uh, you know, I don't know many cities our size that have their own poet laureate. And again, this was a bottoms-up activity that was uh, the Fine Arts Commission and the uh, Library Commission a few years ago. Our, our, our former mayor, uh, Chris Wang, said, you know, I think our, our commission should work together. They got together and came up with the idea of a poet laureate. And I was like, oh, okay, that's nice, I guess, sure, you know, I don't know what that means, but, uh, but David Denny, who is our poet laureate, has done some amazing things. He's had a number of poetry readings, and in this picture, I was at this event the other night, he's put together a poetry contest um, ranging from up to 
three, three categories, up to 13, 13, 18 in adults. They had 300 entries. <laughs> and uh, they read their, you know, they, they, they were able to read their poems the other night uh, in, in the top three in, in all three categories. And, and I mean, in general, they were amazing. But there's one, one young lady that's a senior, a high school senior, that did one that just blew me away. And we're going to have her come and uh, read her poem at, at a future council meeting. And it's just like, it just stopped me in my tracks. That's all I'll say about it. So, uh, so again, we love our arts. We support our arts. Um, again, the city supports in some ways. But almost like everything else that I've been talking about today, it's, it's everybody together that makes it work. We love our neighborhoods. We have a strong block leader program. Again, this is unique. Uh, this is something that our, our former city manager you know, brought to Cupertino. Um, this has been an important program in, in having the city communicate with our neighbors, the two-way communication, but more important, having them communicate to each other. And as we've, uh, as we've moved to a more diverse community, it's been a strong part of how people can get together and get to know each other so that they, so they can work together. It's only when you're working together on projects like, like we've done here uh, with many of the organizations that you really, you've really form those bonds. We love our veterans. Again, you know, we have the Veterans Memorial out here. Hopefully most of the people here have been to that. We do a ceremony every year at Veterans Day for that. Uh, another activity that didn't start at the top from the city started from a, a grassroots uh, number of people, including former Mayor Sandy James that drove this project uh, with, with mostly private capital to put this up. Um, when I was, I was going to put a, a picture in here of, of the Veterans Memorial or something, and in the meantime, I got an email uh, with this picture, and uh, this picture was taken by a, a woman who has three sons. Uh, that are all in the army, and this is her grandson, and uh, this is you know on the, on the wall of the Veterans Memorial. And actually, this photo is the reason it was sent around is this photo is on the Army Photo of the Year site, and right now it's leading in in votes and stuff for it. So, <laughs> we love our trees. Um, again, we we start out you know kind of things go through these various ways. We start out like with this issue about street trees. We had some people that said that we, weren't, we were doing things with our street trees that are owned by the city, but they look like they were in their yards because they didn't have a sidewalk. And they were upset about, about some of the things we were doing. So we said, we've really got to formalize this program and let people know which are street trees and which are not. And then we also wanted to make the city more green, as you heard in there, green, literally green with more trees. And again, bottoms up, we had, as we're talking about this, we had one gentleman come in with pictures, and he says, you guys haven't done a very good job. And he had these pictures of all these areas in the city that really were underplanted for various reasons. And that got all turned around to this new program where we're going to plant 1,400 trees over the next four years. Um, and then the trees are going to have badges uh, with little QR codes for those of you, well, I thought I had a QR code, those little things you scan and you can, you can, you know, your, an app will come up and it'll tell you all about it. So it'll tell you all about the tree, it's a street tree, what it is, care and maintenance and all those things. Really, really nice, nice program. Do we love our city council? I I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> All I'll say is that, you know, uh, we've got a great council right now. We're all working hard uh, to do the right things for the city. We may not always agree on everything, but, but we've always got the interest of the, of the city in mind. So, so I talked earlier about, you know, marrying Cupertino and, and uh, you know, are we, are we ready to do that? Mm, I don't know. Let's take a look. As I said earlier, I didn't think anybody was ready to marry Cupertino by getting a tattoo. But as I put this presentation together and realized all the things that we loved about Cupertino, I decided, why not? <laughs> so I went, wanting to shop Cupertino, went looking for a tattoo partner here in town, and surprised there aren't any. So I went to the House of Pain tattoo shop in a nearby city to implement my plan. And then I decided that all elected officials in Cupertino should get tattoos. So I used my vast powers as mayor to make that happen. 
We love, love Cupertino, and we're ready to work for you. I can't juggle, so I had to do something. <laughs> So, in case you haven't figured out by now, the state of the city is excellent, you know. Uh, but it's also, it's not because of us. It's not because of the, those jokers you just saw in the video there. Although we do play a role and, and play our part. It really is, you know, uh, in the book, Kageyama calls them the co-creators. But it's really uh, people, almost everybody in this room is one. It's the people on the commissions. It's the people uh, in the service organizations. It's the people in the school groups, the PTAs. Uh, every, you know, every individual, the business owners, the chamber, uh, it's all of you that, 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 make the city, that make the city what it is. So um, um, that's, I think it's great. I do love Cupertino. I do have my tattoo still on. Um, so I want everybody to go out and, and continue to do all that you do. And uh, as a thank you for that, the centerpieces are made up of hats that you can take uh, with you. The I Love Cupertino hats is, as a small... Um, a uh, small memento from the city for all the work that everybody in here does. So thank you very much and keep up the good work.